All good. Nice. All good. Nice, Thank nice, you guys nice. so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, of course. It's all about you guys and your journey in music. That's what our podcast is about. Um, cool. And we'll, yeah, talk about How do I pronounce it? Is it Jubel? Sounds perfect. Okay. <laughs> is yeah. it or is it totally wrong? <laughs> no, but it's it's different from country to country, I guess. <laughs> but uh, that's yeah. how how we pronounce it, so it's perfect. Oh, perfect! It, switch. it switches. All right, but I said it in in the correct tongue, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jubal. Okay. Jubal. All right, right on, guys. So uh, from Sweden, both of you are from around the same area, or where were you born and raised? Yeah, yeah. we're born and raised in the same city called uh, Halmstad. It's on the west coast of Sweden. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm down here at, right now. Oh, you are. At it. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> Looking at it, <laughs> where are you at, uh, Victor? Anywhere? In, are, are you similar area or no? I'm in Stockholm. We both live in Stockholm. We moved here two years ago now. Okay. And Sebastian went back home for some Easter celebrations. Ah, how is your guys' Easter, by the way? It's good. Very chill. It's great. Good. Yeah. How far is that from 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 uh, Stockholm? Fairly it's close uh, five hundred kilometers, so about five hours in the car. Oh yeah! Wow. Okay. So it's yeah, kind of a drive there. Um, yeah. Well, in in a homestead, were you guys? Did I mean? How, I'm not sure how big the the town is. Did you guys go to the same school at all, or did you know each other prior to to starting the group? Uh, actually, uh, actually, it's, it's a, yeah, yeah, it, it's a bit uh, of a. Uh, Victor is four years older than me, so uh, uh, we, we met uh, through music. Oh, okay. Uh, when I, w- I was going to, uh, is it college or? Yeah. I don't know. Sure. Maybe. Is maybe. After, it, or, uh, like grade. Or maybe not. High school, after, maybe. Yeah, high school ends in grade 12 here. Yeah, I can't remember. I don't know what it is, but it, yeah, but then. Uh, some, uh, some, some sort of school. Yeah, <laughs> we met somewhere there, around there. <laughs> Yeah, right, right on. Well, uh, let's start with with you, Sebastian. So we're born and raised in Holmes, uh, Halstom. That's how, Halstom. Did. <laughs> how did you get into music? Uh, actually, it was I, I, I mean, I, I always been in interested in music, but uh, I was at a like a lawn party where people set up their computers and they play for like three days. And there was a guy uh producing music and i i've never seen it that you can make music on uh, a computer so i actually asked him i was like what game are you playing (laughs) and he was like i'm actually making music Uh, and i was like okay and then he showed me and uh, when i got home i downloaded the the program it's actually the same program i use today called fruity loops Oh, you still and, use um, Fruity Loops? That's dope. Yeah. Wow. Basics. Yes. That is then I amazing. Just do they update? Do like, they like update that at all, or is it still the same yeah, version? Yeah. I mean, okay. a lot of like great producers still use it. That's amazing. And yeah, um, yeah it was like one guy in my school who knew the the program, so uh, we hanged out, and he like showed me how to use it, and then I just grinded. Every day, make made beats that sounded pretty shitty, but uh, <laughs> one one beat came through, and uh, Victor heard it, or your girlfriend heard it. Yeah, uh, and uh, we got in contact, and uh, we met up, and then we've made music together ever since. Wow, that's incredible! So no yeah. like piano lessons as a kid, no like guitar. It was just straight to Fruity Loops and and yeah. witnessing somebody else using it. Wow, that's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. That's you- the, that's a great part like the great thing of it that everyone can create if they can like if you can think music you can print it out or like paint paint notes in the program mm-hmm. which is pretty amazing. That is really amazing. How about you Victor how did you get into music? Uh well I guess it's kind of the same story. I've always been interested in music and listened to it a lot. Grew up in a home where my parents like introduced me to like lots of music my mom was a dance teacher you know creative dish oh, wow. yeah uh-huh. so uh, eventually when i got older i bought a guitar and uh, just fooled around and um, when i was like 18 i got into the club scene 
uh, hosted a few parties and started to DJ. And that's like where my eyes opened up for like electronic music. And uh, eventually I met up with Sebastian and we started making music together. So it's, yeah, that's like the short story. <laughs> when you're, how'd you get into like cut your teeth into the, the clubs where you just spinning like a specific genre and like learning to mix like how, yeah, how did so you how do you even get in, both, involved yeah. in that yeah we both were very into like electronic music that's like where we come from and uh Hampstead is a very small city we had like one club and i get to know the owner uh, and i like convinced him i was a great dj i wasn't mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh fake it till we, you make it yeah exactly yeah. and um eventually i got to play there uh actually together with Sebastian as well, while he was a minor and he got kicked out middle of the set. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fun story. I want to hear that uh, story. Yeah, our first like official uh, <laughs> gig together, uh, this guy hooked us up on the, on the local club in Hamstad and uh, like 30 minutes in the set, someone told the guard that Sebastian was like a minor and they kicked him out. <laughs> Somebody Asshole. ratted him out? Oh man, yeah. how it was, did they it know? Was actually, it do you know who ran you out? Yeah, the resident DJ. Except he <laughs> was like, fuck you, I'm going to play here. Oh, he's jealous. Yeah. Wow. He knew that you guys were going to get bigger than him. <laughs> Probably. Probably. But, but, oh, by, by, by that time, I, uh, I had a company. I used to sell watches, like just like accessory watches. No, uh -huh. no good watches, but, you know, like colorful things. Yeah. And uh, we sponsored a lot of events and I met a lot of DJs and made my connections. I knew that I wanted to work in the business, but I didn't really know if I was going to be a DJ or manager or whatever. I just wanted to be in that culture. Uh, so uh, like with my connections and Sebastian's producing skills, we like things moved on pretty quickly. We met in 2012 and we had our first release in 2013. Mm -hmm. And by that year, we also... Uh, uh, played at uh, a festival here in Sweden called Summerburst, which wow. is the biggest electronic festival in Scandinavia, I think. Yeah. So from wow. just sitting in the basement and like hardly not knowing what, what we were making and uh, standing on stage in front of like 30,000 people, <laughs> that journey took only one year. So, uh, that is I mean, crazy. a lot of dedication and uh, good connections and uh, hard work. Sure. That was yeah. like our breakthrough. Wow. Also, that also the first single that we we released uh, sold platinum, and it it was written by Nuni Bao, who is like uh, the biggest songwriter in Sweden. And our manager met her on a, like a coffee shop, and he had like issues with his uh, registrations of songs, and he was like, "Can you help me?" And they started talking, and she was like, "I'm also into songwriting," and that was her first single as well. So. So her That's first signal and your guys, you guys collaborated on this song and it went platinum. Yeah. And yeah. it was like her first, it was her first uh, single like as a songwriter yeah. and it was yeah, our exactly. first song as a, uh, like an artist project. Wow. Talk really about good. a validating moment, right? It's like, well, yeah. this is something. <laughs> mm -hmm. At that point, were you like working like for you? I know uh, you're talking, Victor, you had a, a watch company, but what about you, Sebastian? Were you working like, some job at this point and you're like well now i have a platinum record so psh, yep. i'm out <laughs> actually i i jumped out of school uh when uh, me and victor started uh, producing music because i was like okay we went on trips to stockholm yeah we went to trips like every other week uh together with our manager who lived there and he like set up studios for us to to work in and he he guided us how to produce and such and uh, my teacher didn't allow me to skip school that much. So me and my mom was like, okay, if, if it's, it's now or never. So I jumped out of school like one year or two years before graduation. So uh, I've never had a job or I, I've never finished school because uh, after, after this single, we were on like tour for like four years or five years. Oh, uh, and wow. um just from shows to shows. And it was like mostly Sweden, but it's- it, We managed uh, it, to survive, like economically. Yeah, I managed to survive. Right. But it was like, we started off on the on the top and then it just like, 
it was it was going down downhill from there for like yeah five years but we kept going and then and mm. yeah one one thing to mention about this is like we started off in the in the idm slash club mm -hmm. scene we had a project called galavant as, as sebastian mentioned we like started off with the biggest festival and then the scene got colder and you know people don't wanted to pay so much for like upcoming acts to come play their clubs and such so Jubel is actually like a creation of us. Like we have to move on from that kind of music and we want to do something else because we've been touring, as Sebastian said, for many years and like visited all the clubs here in Sweden. So, oh, yeah. Okay. Then we I was wondering because, yeah, you were talking about a song that came out in 2013 and I was looking, I'm just, you know, off your, you know, website and, and Spotify and stuff and I didn't see the song. So I was kind of curious with, with where that platinum record came, I would think that that would be on there. But if it's a, it was under a different name and, and everything, yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So basic. Mm. Okay, so yeah, so it was under a different name, and then at the, then yeah. you said it kind of, it was it was harder and harder to get in the clubs if you weren't a bigger bigger name, I guess. So over the course of the years, I mean, you said five years before it started picking back up again or before you started jubilee or and like how what happened where you with the name change and how that it all did that all kind of um come together mm. it's like yeah uh, from, we, we from had, the first we like mm. thought about yeah sure you, you can you can okay <laughs> so first we, it was like just an idea we, Wanted to make uh, other kind of music, I guess, and uh, we figured uh, Sebastian can sing, so we should use that. So uh, we just like on the studio and we made our first single and released it like uh, independently on, uh, yeah, like a desktop project. Actually, didn't have any plan about it. And that singer went quite good, so we uh -huh. put another one out and we got a, an offer. A record label wanted to work with us. And by then we were like, okay, this is actually working. People uh -huh. like this kind of music and we do as well. It's super funny to make something else and just EDM. Mm -hmm. So uh, from that point, uh, things happened really, really quickly. This was like back in 2018. And that's mm -hmm. where we like released Dancing in the Moonlight as well, which got mm -hmm. huge quite fast. So <laughs> oh, yeah, just, <laughs> things just happened. We didn't have any plan or like, you know like any goals or whatever mm. we didn't know that we wanted to do something else so that's why we created jubel so yeah sure so sebastian was like are you talking about home is that the first thing that you guys put out together as jubel yeah, yeah. okay so yeah with that song was it was it like like had you ever sang on a track before sebastian or was that something like totally new to you like tell me about uh, that i mean we bought we bought a microphone uh, a couple of years ago because uh, we realized that it was hard to get songwriters to get to, to get to sing on your tracks and um, we didn't have a publisher back then and it, it, things were hard so we bought a microphone and uh, I just tried to sing and uh, I didn't know that I could sing or it just like it sounded shit in the beginning and it developed and uh, we went on a camp in Berlin uh, mm -hmm. for like a DJ, DJ called Alan Farben and then um, the home song we wrote there and uh, they didn't they didn't want it so we we released it ourselves with my voice uh, just to get it out and um, uh, as Victor said it was supposed to be a, a desktop project but since people wanted to work around the around the project they wanted us to be in front of the project and uh, that that so like singing on songs came naturally and uh now i do it all all the time and we mm -hmm. like we write songs and uh for other people as well so the singing is pretty natural now i'd say that's nice that's really cool um did you uh like was that first song home you said you guys got attention from a record label is that when you were offered and signed to warner music or was a, no. a different label prior to that like first, the, the home song we released ourselves, and then uh -huh. uh, it got a bit of traction, and uh, we signed with a label called Amuse in Sweden, and we released okay. a song called Breakup Song, 
mm-hmm. followed up by our other song called Illusion. And the Illusion went pretty well. It was on like a, it was on like the H and M playlist, so it got played in uh, wow in in the UK. And like H and M clothing, like the yeah. fashion clothes. Okay, they had it on like a playlist there. So uh, one A and R from the record label Good Soldier heard it when he was in the store, and he was like, "Okay, I like the song." So he just sammed it, and then uh, he contacted us and said, "Like, okay, I'm coming to Sweden." I heard your song. Do you want to meet up and uh, play up, play me some songs? Uh-huh. So, uh, so we did that, and he came to the studio, and we showed him like we, we had a few songs on the on the table, uh, and he was like, okay, and we, we we was like, okay, we have one more song, and then we showed him the Dancing in the Moonlight song, uh, and then I was singing on it because it it was just a fun. That song was like we did it for fun in the studio, and it. It just lied there on the on the desktop. We didn't we didn't have any plans on releasing it. And he was like, "Okay, this is a song I want to release. Like, I don't want the other songs. I just want <laughs> one. Give me just one of the like and make the song huge." Uh, and it was like, "Okay, uh, we don't care." And uh, we actually <laughs> changed changed my vocal to a a girl vocal uh-huh. because we were like, "Okay, we need it needs to stand out from the original." Uh-huh. Um, and back then we ex- like Victor said we didn't have any plans on artistry or anything so for us it was all about song and, sure uh, and then uh, 300 million streams later yeah. <laughs> I obviously the guy knew what he was he heard yeah. something there I mean that's incredible and I do love yeah. the version I was going to ask how you how you got her on on the record because she sings on an acoustic version of hmm. Illusion which is Another is it's a incredible song and it's interesting for an electronic group to kind of go acoustic. What was the the thought process there? Actually, that uh, song is, isn't acoustic. We have uh, it's too, maybe you there is there's an acoustic a, version. There's an acoustic there's version. Radio. I've heard yeah, the, like the regular probably. version, but there's an acoustic version of the song, right? Yeah, absolutely. But but the, it's it, the original song is uh, in um, duet by me and. Uh, Naomi, so right. uh, so when we released uh, Dancing in the Moonlight, she was like, she was the only girl we knew, and we love her voice. So <laughs> I was like, could you like try it, sing on this, and uh, we might we're gonna release it with an English label. And she was like, oh. yeah, for sure. So we knew her, and uh, yeah. So that's kind of how that happened. Yeah, yeah and re- that's how re- that re- song- like regarding the acoustic versions that's just like a progress for us to because we wanted to try to be more organic driven and just fool around with guitars and like piano and yeah so that's for now that's like became the core of tubal we try always try to like include organic elements yeah I love that we so, barely uh, we barely use any like synthesis I, we, we use analog synths but like we've switched up our whole like production style we always like it's it's ninety percent original or organic stuff, mm-hmm. and then uh, the I rest. I think is... that's just like uh, from making like EDM for so many years. Everything was supposed to sound like uh, something that's like was chart charting or so. Like, sure. Yeah. So we just wanted to like try to develop or like musical side or, or yeah. Just yeah, just kind of branch out. I love that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, so talk to me about, you guys are obviously, you know, you're doing electronic music, you're DJing clubs, and that's kind of a big piece of what you do, I would assume, right? Like playing live in front of, of in front of people, and then come 2020, the whole entire world shuts down. Mm-hmm. Where were you guys when, when the coronavirus hit, how that affected you? And then you guys put out a record called uh, Straw Town in 2020, and what was, you know, was that a hard decision to make? Yeah, so so we didn't have the chance to play, like, really, like, we just did a few gigs here since here in Sweden before the coronavirus happened. Okay. But by then, uh, Dancing in the Moonlight, like, really exploded, and uh, we were planning, like, a, a European tour. So that's kind of sad. But with that said, we sure. still wanted to release music and just wanted to, like, keep the, yeah, the 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 band, like growing, growing through the music 
Was, yeah. Were the were so, those songs that you had written prior to the coronavirus happening? And was there ever a thought like, okay, we have these records, like, do we save them because we want to still ride the wave of dancing in the moonlight when the tours can happen or whatever? Or was it just we should get these music out to the to the to the world? Yeah, it, it was so new for everyone with the coronavirus. So we didn't we we had plenty of meetings with our label and decided how to how to how to play it right. But um, it was pretty easy for us to. Uh, decided that we're gonna keep releasing music because um i mean it it's the dancing in moonlight <laughs> it started blowing like two years after so mm -hmm. we had we hadn't put out any music for quite a while so like victor said it was so important for us to keep it growing rather than like having songs to tour on and just kind of uh, stopping yeah yeah interesting okay and then you guys had a song that like blew up in tiktok too right in 2020 yeah we actually been quite fortunate on like people are getting creative with our songs um is that kind of cool really to see the, yeah i don't really know the stats but uh, i've seen them <laughs> and it's amazing of course were you guys like involved with that app at all? Because I know that's an app. Like i personally don't have it and my my son does and he he loves mm -hmm. it and that's all he does I mean, like every time I look at him, I'm like, what are you doing? Oh, scrolling through TikTok. Mm. Um, <laughs> but I know it's an app that a lot of people downloaded kind of in the beginning of, of this whole lockdown. And it really blew up there. Like, yeah. was this something that, or is it something that you guys follow and watch at all? Or did you have the app? And was it cool to see people using your like sound bites to do different like dance things and, 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 and all that happens on TikTok. Yeah, we I mean, have uh, the yeah. oh. go sure. go ahead, Sebastian. You're the TikTok. Okay, uh, <laughs> the yeah, TikTok I mean, master. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tried to to get a hang of the the whole TikTok thing. Uh, we we tried to do some together, but it just it didn't came it, it or it's still it doesn't come naturally for us. We've tried it, but we. We barely do it, and if we do it, it's like we we're playing covers of other songs or own songs in an acoustic way, because that's oh. that, that's fun for us, and we we don't have to put up a yeah a character. And um, but I mean, when the I, I I to be honest, I don't I haven't seen like the the big wave on TikTok for our music because I never I never use the app, so I just get the <laughs> statistics from like labels. Yeah. And, uh, for management that's funny <laughs> i wish that we i wish that we actually enjoy the app and we use it because it's a great platform for music to to explode but mm -hmm. it's uh it, yeah it's like creating the wheel it's too hard yeah we make right. the music and other people that's great on tiktok can use it to yeah. create their like dances and stuff yeah, yeah that's, that's amazing, amazing. That's amazing. It, it is i mean it's crazy how these artists are just coming out of tiktok like yes. you know it started kind of with little nas x and blew yeah. up from there but like i mean obviously you guys had millions upon millions of streams prior to tiktok even being a thing so the fact mm. that people are using your soundbite is a bit different mm. i think for you as opposed to a, an artist that kind of emerges out of tiktok exactly like you yeah. already exactly. had a career and it's like wow that's rad people are are utilizing our sound Mm. in the app but i mean mm. it's not like it i'm sure it helped your streaming and your numbers and i'm sure it's super dope to see that but it's not like you know dancing in the moonlight didn't have 200 plus million streams already on spotify <laughs> which is yeah, yeah in itself. So. so i mean you guys recently put out a uh, weekend vibe too that was the most recent song yeah talk to me about that song that song um it's 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 very special for us because we think that the sound of Jubal took a new place and uh, we we like experimented with a lot of different sounds and genres together with our our sound and mm -hmm. um, I think it's an um, ex yeah exciting song for like listeners because it's 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 go take you to through a journey. And uh, the song is all about like 
live for the weekend and uh, don't think about Monday to Thursday, mm-hmm. whatever. And uh, yeah, just just a happy song. And I think people need that that kind of vibe in these times, um, sure. or whenever. I mean, this this song is pretty uh, universal. So, um, and and yeah, it started off like us playing it by on the guitar, for like ten minutes when we were about to go out of the studio. And uh, we came up with this riff, dun, 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 and we just started mumbling like we always do. Someone picks up the guitar, the other one sings or whatever, and um, the melody just came out. And we stayed in the studio just to make a draft, real quick, and uh, we sent it to our team. And because um, uh, when we create music, we often do it with uh, me victor and david and another victor they they are like behind the behind the project and uh, they one of david was like okay the, i i like the the idea of the song but it can be the the production could be a little more a, better so we went back to the studio and made made it sound really big mm-hmm. in the like sound shaping and um and we showed it to our label and they were like sending videos of them standing on the table and just dancing and they were like oh we fucking love this song or, <laughs> and we were like okay m- m- maybe we created a monster we don't know sure uh it's it's a happy feeling when you when that happens and um yeah so so the song for us is very special and it it, it took it, it guided us in a in another direction that i think is very inspiring. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll say, man, I mean, it's already been remixed, what, like three different times? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's pretty incredible to put out a, a record in 2021, and we're only four months in, and you've already had a handful of people already remixing the song. That must say something about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, I, I don't know if you can say it yet, but I think I can. I think there's coming a, like, an Indian... How do you say Indian remix? Really? India, yeah. India remix. Yeah, uh, Punjabi. Of a, of a huge. They they're gonna like do a real video of it, dance, dance video and such. So that's really exciting. That it is exciting. Pretty, pretty fun. That is awesome, and I'm sure you guys have um, other songs in the in the pike ready to come out as well. Yeah, like the whole Corona situation, as we, because we create everything ourselves we write everything we produce everything so it just gave us time to create a lot of a lot of music so we're like we're like two albums in or whatever we created so much music and um are you here victor are you froze too no i'm here i'm here oh okay oh you cut out sebastian you said it with the whole corona thing and then it went like Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, so we just been creating so much music because, uh, we, we haven't been touring or anything. So we're like, we've done so much music. And is there like an EP or are you guys just going to kind of just keep putting out songs and singles or we're going to put out EPs for now. Like we have two EPs this year, uh, one coming out in May, I think. And then the other one in, uh, like August or October or something. September maybe. Amazing. Uh, Hopefully by then you'd be able to tour it. I mean, they're saying yeah. At least here in the states, there people are booking shows and tours. I mean, there's like big festivals happening yeah. in like October, September. So they they think that uh, we're gonna be able to tour in the uh, yeah, like like you said, October maybe September yeah. October. That's Hopefully. that'd be amazing. Yeah, because I know Bonnaroo here in Tennessee is 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 supposed to happen in be like September first, and uh, they and they announced Outside Lands in San Francisco, which is is happening mm. in the end like around Halloween weekend. So mm. I mean that sounds pretty pretty promising if they're gonna get together. Yeah. You know, that's good 100, news. Hundred thousand people. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. that's good news. Yeah, Let's that is great for that. <clears throat> Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Fingers crossed, man. Yeah. Well, thank you both so much for, for hanging out with me today and chatting. I really thank appreciate it. Thank you for, for calling us. Yeah, yeah. I got one more question for you both. Um, do you have any advice for aspiring artists? For an aspiring Just, artist, like another artist or? Like somebody upcoming. that, like, 
you know, they're sitting in their bedroom, like, how do, how do I become, you know, Jubal? Like, Jubal. How do, how do, yeah, like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I want to have 200 million streams on my song. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I have a good advice. Like, like for our journey, we started, we were lucky in the beginning, but then after that, we went downhill. And I think the key is to just keep going, keep producing or writing songs that you like. You don't have to listen to whatever what other people think. Just do what you like and uh, keep doing it as long as you think it's fun because eventually it's going to happen if it's great enough. I love yeah, that. and besides that, have fun making music. It's supposed to be fun. Mm. When it's not fun, it's not good. Uh, yeah. That's like the whole agenda of Jubal. We always try to have fun in the studio and not like try to think too much. Just do what feels good and eventually yeah. things will start moving. Bring me the best world.